Um, before I actually start the story, I need to read to you. Um, I had a, um, when I was in year 12, one of the modules that I did for two unit, I think it must have been two unit, English, was speeches. So instead of a text like Shineski, is that how you say it? Instead of these poems or writing or whatever, right? Um, that's right, best spelling ever, right? Polish? Is it Polish? Yeah, yeah. Polish. Crazy Polish. Polish. Those crazy Poles. They really are called Poles, did you know that? Anyway. Um, we got 12 speeches. So speeches like Socrates, um, Aung San Suu Kyi, Martin Luther King, Ju Junior. Sorry. That's and so nice. on. Okay, okay. So anyway, I, I have a speech, not, not the whole thing. Not what? Not the whole thing. Um, I just hate hey, people. Uh, from JFK that I'm going to read to you, just a small section, okay? Um, which which has, has nothing and everything to do with the, um, with the story I'm going to tell. But I'll just give you a heads up. Uh, in his speech, this is a speech he gave at uh, a university called Rice University in 1962. Um, it's actually called Rice, it's like, as in Condoleezza Rice, like as a surname, kind of, anyway. Um, James Rice? All, all of the universities in America are named after people's surnames, like Harvard and... Yeah. Um, he gave this speech in 1962 in the context of the Apollo program. Now, who, do, who knows what the Apollo program is? Space. Yeah, okay. So, the Apollo program. <laughs> more specifically. Going to space. That great big more thing in the sky. Going to certain parts of space. Cheese. Landing on the moon. Cheese, right? So, um, this, is, this is his speech. Now, it has a sport reference in it, which because it's 1962, oh, will make no sense to you. Okay, so I've tried to update that oh, part of the no, speech. No, 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 because you keep with the original. Uh, the original will be like, well, huh? but hopefully this will make sense to you. So let me read two, two paragraphs. Yeah. <clears throat> He's trying to justify the Apollo program. There is no strife, no prejudice, no national conflict in outer space as yet. Its hazards are hostile <coughs> to us, uh, hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind and its opportunity for peaceful cooperation may never come again. But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Manly play the roosters? We choose to go to the moon. <laughs> we, that was slow. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because, but they, because are they are hard. hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and the others too. Okay, so well, hopefully it makes sense later. Now, what this is coming under, this idea, um, is areas under curves. That's kind of um, the... the Big subheading that organizes this, okay? And mathematicians have been fascinated by the idea of area for a long time. Like, it's one of the most enduring and useful kinds of problems that there are. How big is something, okay? And even though it's a, it's a simple idea, right? Sorry, JFK, you can um, ask not what area it is under the curve, you can ask what the curve is under the area. Ha. Huh. No, 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 no. That doesn't sense, mate. Please yeah. keep working on it. If you have a sense, that does not make. Um, the idea of area, you know, say, say something like this. Okay. We can, um, even though it's very simple, right? It leads to weird kinds of ideas like, you know, if this is a circle of radius one, right? And the idea of how do you work out this, the area of this thing? Well, first you, you work out circumference, which introduce you to this weird transcendental number. And then the area involves um, that number, okay? So despite being a very simple idea, right? Which is, what is area? It's just length times breadth, right? Um, or, or, or height times width, if you like, okay? Um, simple idea, but it leads to some of the most profound sort of concepts that we understand in the whole world, okay? Now, in terms of areas, shapes like circles or um, triangles or, you know, uh, let's see, quadrilaterals or other kinds of polygons and all kinds, we're really good at working out those areas. Right? We, can, we can chop and dice them up and uh, everything comes back to this, de this definition, even triangles, by the way. Like base times height on two, it's because it's half of the rectangle that has the same base and height. Um, we're really good at working out these areas, okay? So in some ways you could say these are kind of like man-made shapes, shapes that we make, okay? Uh, but nature, and particularly um, the kinds of 
processes that happen in nature has a really good way of taking all of our sophisticated methods and knowledge and um, really bringing it down to science. Okay? Now, that, the reason why I say that is because nature has all kinds of areas in it um, that defy these kinds of shapes that we are very good at, at calculating. Okay? So something simple, something simple. Like say, you take a hose, okay, and um, you, you point it in the air, you turn it on, okay, and um, if it's not exactly vertical, you know, the water will make this shape. Now what shape is it? Oh, it's a now it's a, it's a parabola, which is interesting by the way. It's not a parabola because it looks like a parabola. Um, there are other shapes, like I didn't bring one with me, but um, <laughs> um, you, can, you can find other shapes, right, which look like, which look like parabolas. This, this, at least to a certain point, hold on, I should undo this thing. Um, oh no, it's got to be slow, yeah. No, it's not going to work. I'll go back to where it was before. If you take any kind of um, length that's flexible and you let it hang under its own weight, at some points, it's, you know, if I, if I can imagine, you know, that's just one thing. It looks like a parabola, right? It looks like the vertex of a parabola, but it's not. It's a different kind of shape entirely. Um, is that which is, uh, yes, it has a name, but we'll explain it later. Um, it's a parabola, I can prove it through laws of motion. Okay? Now, the area under this shape, you, you can't dice it up into anything like these. I mean, you can get close, okay? but you can't, get, you can't get it exactly, right? And it's not the only kind of shape. You think about a population, or um, you know, radioactive decay, which would be the opposite way. Okay? Um, this kind of area is exactly the same. Now, these are very, very simple ideas. Right? You know, motion under gravity or, or the growth of a population. Simple like these. Okay. But it defies our understanding of area. Okay? Now, some of you may well ask, well, but who cares? Like these are not these are not even geometric shapes. They're, this is like a it's a it's a function, right? So who cares about the area underneath it, right? Um, to which I think JFK would answer, well. Why do we choose to try and work out an area like this? Because the Soviets will do it. Because <laughs> we'll lose the Cold War. Because it's it's an interesting problem. Why not? It's challenging. It's it's why should such a simple shape um, defy the simple rules that we already know? Okay. So there was a guy, not not JFK, not American, a um, a German mathematician, and his name was um, Bernhard Riemann. Now, I, I'm probably um, pronouncing that all wrong, but um, Riemann was a clever guy. In fact, you'll find him and his picture in our corridor somewhere along. I, don't, I didn't go and check where exactly, what Riemann's on. Um, but Riemann, he was pretty smart, and he looked at this, and he said in the 1800s, I think, um, he said, look, this is a challenge. I think I can do something with this, okay? Now, let's just take this exponential, right? Let me get rid of these area lines. Now, I'm gonna go down to, he said, the very, very most basic idea of what area is. Okay? And we said before, the area is, you know, uh, what did we say? Uh, height times width of a rectangle. Okay? That's the basic idea of what area is. And he said, I, I can't get it exactly, but I can get pretty close if I take this thing and I dice it up into a bunch of rectangles. Okay? Now, you, you can do it uh, multiple you know, different ways, but here's one way. Okay? So, for instance, well, those, are, those are trapezes, but you get the he said, look, if I, if I take all of these rectangles, okay, and this is, um, this is called the, um, the right, triangle, right rectangle way. I'll show you the left way in a second. Oh, no, sorry, it's left. It's left. It is left. Um, he said, if I take the area of all of these rectangles, that'll get pretty close, right? And um, the more rectangles I take, the closer I'll get, right? So he said, no, I'll, I'll get this out later. Um, he said, I can get a pretty close approximation. Now, he wanted to express, you know, what he was actually doing here, okay? So, he said, look, I've got one big thing, okay, one big area, and I'm approximating it by taking the sum of a whole bunch of smaller areas, okay? So, we have language and notation for describing sums of things, right? So, he would say, look, this is the sum of, now, the sum of what? How would you express it, okay? Um... Well, how many how many rectangles are there? Well, I don't know. Okay. Um, can you make you can you can make it as few or as many as you might, right? So let's say I don't know. I'm um, sorry. Can n equal r? Because let's, r is Let's let's start from one. Okay. Let's start from one. So k is my dummy variable, which I'm going to have in there in a second. 
And uh, let's end at, well, how many tri rectangles do you want? Let's just say n rectangles. Okay, so in this case, n would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, um, so I'd go from 1 to 9. Now, what, what am I actually adding up? What's the thing that goes in here? Okay, well, each of these parts of the sum, right, is a, um, it's a height times a width, right? Height times a width. Now, what defines the height of this thing? This is, this is some function. Okay. Well, at each point, the height is defined by whatever the function is. Now, I think I said it was like, you know, uh, an exponential, like 2 to the x or 3 to the x or something like that. Okay. But just for the sake of our, an argument, let's just leave it as any kind of function, which we can't work out areas nice and neatly for. Okay. So, the height at each point will be f of something. Okay. Whatever, you know, these points that we decide are. Okay. So, what I'm going to call them is, you know, this is like my, my first point, so I'll call that like x1, and call that one x2, and x3, and so on. And I guess in this case, I'd be up to like x9 or something. Okay? So if that point is x1, then the height is f of x1, and f of x2, and, and so on. Okay? So to go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, I'm going to use this k business. Okay? So it's x of k. Does this make sense? Is it clicking with what we did yesterday? So every time I go up, this thing is changing. I'm going to work out a different height. Okay. Now, what's the other part of area? Height times width. Okay. Now, I've just defined each width to be the same. It kind of makes sense to me. You don't have to, but I'm just going to leave that as, as W. Okay. I could call it something else. Um, textbooks call it something else, but it'll do for now. Right? So the important thing is, um, that's a height. That's a width. And this thing is take the, take the sum of, of all of these things. 